Flames fans are getting riled up. After another loss, Flames hockey becomes more and more meaningless as the season winds down. And Flames fans are becoming more and more frustrated with the coaching and management's decisions of who they put in the lineup each night. Welcome to Flames Digest, I'm Mark Griffith. If you're new around here and you love the Flames, make sure you subscribe because right around 83% of the people watching are not subscribed. So if you wanna stay up to date on all the latest news, updates, reports, and rumors surrounding your Calgary Flames, then make sure you join the fastest growing community of Flames fans on the internet. We would love to welcome you to the Flames Digest family. Now, like I said, a lot of Flames fans, they're getting a little bit upset that the Flames, the coaching, the management, they're deciding to play maybe some of the veterans instead of buying into the future. And last night was a great example of that. So why don't we start with the loss last night? The Flames, they went out to Vancouver. It was Andre Kuzmenko's return to Vancouver. And that really didn't end up being much of a storyline at all. You know, it was the first Flames Canucks game since the Elias Lindholm trade. And Kuzmenko didn't really give, you know, any thanks to the fans. He didn't really salute them or wave at them or anything. And Canucks fans kind of, they just gave a lackluster round of applause, ovation, I guess you could call it. But it was very, very minimal, and that really didn't play into it. Now, Lindholm on the other side of the trade, obviously it was his first game against the Calgary Flames since being traded. He, of course, got the empty netter that sealed the deal. Um, the Flames did get another goal right at the end, but it was a 4-2 loss in the end. Um, Lindholm did score the fourth of that, and it was too bad. You know, the Flames, they came out flat in the first period. It, there was no denying it. The giveaways in their own zone were, honestly, it was tremendous how just awful they were. And the Flames, they just didn't look great on any offensive rushes really in the first. But as the game progressed, they did get better. Um, but it was unfortunate. They did end up losing to one of their biggest rivals. And I know a lot of Flames fans want the losses to pile up at this point, And that's completely fair. I understand if Flames fans want, you know, the potential to have a higher draft pick, maybe draft a bit of a better player. But no matter what, it does sting to kind of lose to one of your rivals, no matter what. I grew up in an era where the Canucks were always a bit better than the Flames. So I grew to resent the Canucks for sure. And it did stink losing to him last night, but I do always see the bright side of things with the loss. It does mean maybe we will get a higher draft pick, but no matter what, the game itself, you know, nothing too exciting. I, I personally thought a lot of players were getting hit and falling over. I swear there was always someone down on the ice, but it was nice to see, you know, some goals by the Flames in the end. But at the end of the day, a loss is a loss. But the big thing in this video is that, you know, Flames fans are getting a little bit riled up here. Now, I'm not speaking for all Flames fans, of course, not even close to 100% of the sea of red, but a lot of Flames fans want the team, you know, the coaching decisions to buy into the future a bit more. Obviously, last night we saw Markstrom come back from injury. He didn't necessarily have a bad game, but it wasn't a fantastic game either. Can't say the goals were all his fault. And he only gave up three, which isn't too bad. But a lot of people want to see Wolf as much as possible. I know it's a back-to-back -back and he will most likely be going tonight against Buffalo. But a lot of people want to see Wolf. But more so, they want to see the young forwards get a chance to play. Peltier, Coronado, stuff like that. Because the Flames should be buying into the future in a lot of people's eyes. And I completely understand that. Now, I also understand the other side. So I will play devil's advocate after reading what I'm about to read. But I will show you a little opinion I saw from Reddit. Now, Reddit is an absolute goldmine for Flames content. If you want that little extra bit of, you know, perspectives and information on the Flames, then definitely join the Calgary Flames forum on Reddit. But here was a post I saw late last night after the game. Why don't we just play the kids? I don't understand the lineup decisions tonight. We are clearly not making the playoffs and we are rebuilding. So why not just play the kids to get them some experience? No offense to Greer or Rooney, but I'd rather just play Peltier and Coronado instead. You can pretty much give the Huberto or Mangiapane lines, and it's crazy to call that the Mangiapane line because how is that not called the Backlund or even Coleman line at this point? But anyway, less minutes and just give a bunch of ice time to all the young guys. We know what those players are, and these next 11 games, I think it's actually 13, but whatever, mean nothing for them. Playoffs are likely minimum three or four years away. Experience for the rookies is what matters now. I also would play Wolf any game that isn't a back-to-back -back going forward. No offense to Markstrom, but you aren't in our long-term plans either. Harsh. Harsh on the veterans, on Markstrom, and on the coaching. The people deciding who gets to play. 
And it's very interesting here that this is a perspective where the future matters most, play those young guys and get them NHL experience, which is a decent mindset to have, but it doesn't show the whole picture. Sometimes those young guys, we've seen it with Pelche. We discussed it in a previous video this week. It's better that he's down in the AHL so that he can get more playing time, more minutes, score a little more and get his confidence up. When he's been up in the NHL, you know, he's stuck on the fourth line barely getting any ice time, barely getting any points. And he's playing a little more timidly, you know, a little more scared ever since he got crunched by Jacob Truba. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's a conundrum for sure of whether to play them or not. Now there's a chance Coronado could slot into the lineup tonight, but I don't know. It's, I'll show you the other side. I was able to capture a different perspective, maybe more of a devil's advocate to what was said there in the same thread. So it's still a meritocracy. Greer and Hunt have outplayed Pelche and Coronado this year. Merit, merit, mer, merit, oh, crossy. I have no idea how to say that. Greer and Rooney are playing 10 minutes a night on the fourth line. Coronado, at the very least, is wasting his time being put on the fourth line. Pelche played there when we had injuries, but both are far better off playing 20 plus minutes in the AHL. Also, it's a B2B with travel. We may very well see Coronado subbed in versus Buffalo. Today could have been more for him to watch the game and learn. Lastly, there was no certainty Zeri was returning until after the team was already in Vancouver. So it definitely shows the perspective of maybe it's better that the young guys are down in the AHL. Now, Greer last night had an awful game, in my opinion. He really didn't play well at all, did almost nothing in the offensive end, and was a bit of a liability on the back. So I do understand a lot of people would rather have a young, skilled guy in there. But you know what? They have earned their place. In that word that I can't even pronounce, I know what it means at least. It means they've earned their place um, and that's how it should be. You know, they have shown that they are the veterans. They know what it, how, what it takes to play hockey, especially. They don't need any more experience. They know it already. But the other side, of course, is showing, you know what? These young guys do need NHL experience in order to succeed in the NHL. You can't just expect them to be amazing in the AHL, come right into the NHL and it happens. But we have seen it with Zeri. You know, he took his time down in the AHL. And this year, he has been one of the Flames' best players. Now, of course, the other side would say, well, it's because he's in the NHL. He's had time to develop. And that's true. But especially late in the season, the Flames not being the best team, um, it might hurt the confidence and stunt the growth of some of those young guys. So I do understand both sides. I, I love Coronado and Pelche. I'd love to see them up in the NHL. But I do understand needing them to develop more down in the the AHL before fully committing to the NHL. Now that brings us to tonight's game. The Flames are right back in action. It's the uh, it's a back-to-back -back here, but they're back in Calgary. They've made it back home, and tonight they will be playing against Buffalo at the Dome. That goes at 7 p.m. tonight. Buffalo still in the hunt for the playoffs. The Flames, not really anymore. So this game is quite meaningful for the Sabres, but maybe the Flames want to play spoiler a little bit here. And I'm sure they will still compete as hard as possible. It does look like Wolf will be getting the start tonight. I'll show you that here. So from Pat Steinberg. Flames aren't skating Sunday morning, obviously after playing late last night. But they host Buffalo tonight at 7 p.m. Dustin, Dustin Wolf expected in net. Will confirm starting goalie and other lineup changes at warm-up. So if you need to follow his Twitter, there it is. And then Uko Pekka Lukanen in the starters net for Buffalo this morning. And I think he is confirmed as the starter now. And just a little reply there that I like, damn, I wanted to see Levi versus Wolf. That would have been quite something to see. Arguably the future of American goaltending in the league. I know they have so many good ones with Ottinger and Demko and Hellebuck. But Wolf could be seen as the future of American goaltending, where of course Levi is the future of Canadian goaltending. But it does look like Lukanen will be in net and hopefully Wolf will be as well. Hopefully he can do really, really well as well and show just how good he can be. And maybe that will shut up some of the haters on both the Wolf side and Markstrom side. But either way, it's not a bad position to be in with two goaltenders that could easily play in the NHL right now. I know a lot of people want to commit to Wolf, show what he can do. And especially with so many minimal games left through the season, it would be nice to see Wolf between the pipes more and more so he can get that NHL experience. But I do understand why Flames fans are riled up about some of the young guys not playing. Either way, that is the end of this video here. Please subscribe if you like what you saw here today, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and I hope you enjoy the game tonight. Go Flames, go!